Finally, the case number three, where we have again different values, results. We have a cardiac index of 1.73. It's very low cardiac index, a very low blood flow. So there is an issue again with the blood flow. And then, as always, have a look at determinants of the cardiac index at the preload. What about the global end diastolic volume index? We see a value of nearly 1200. In relation to a normal range, that's extremely high. So this patient has clearly a fluid overload due to any reason. We don't know why for the moment, but we see a clear fluid overload. When looking at stroke volume variation, assuming the patient is under control of mechanical ventilation, this of course is pretty low because the patient is already more than well filled. The vascular contractility, the systemic vascular resistance is dramatically increased. The patient is vasoconstricted, centralized, and what about the contractility parameters, cardiac function index, cardiac power index? We can see both are quite low, means there is an issue with the cardiac function. And last but not least, the lung parameters, extravascular lung voucher index shows a value of 27, extremely high. This patient is under pulmonary edema, definitely. And again, when we see high lung voucher values, we should have a look at the pulmonary vascular permeability index. And in this case, it's quite low, means most likely the lung water is due to a fluid overload. And this is again confirmed by the global end diastolic volume index. So what is the summary of this situation? We have impaired blood flow, really, really low blood flow, most likely because of a failing heart, left heart maybe. But we can just have a look at general uh, parameters. And this is resulting in a fluid accumulation in the lung tissue causing cardiogenic pulmonary edema. So this is a typical patient with cardiogenic shock associated with cardiac pulmonary edema. Treatment options in this case, it's more clear what to do. Of course, we should reduce the intravascular fluid status. We should apply fluid withdrawal in the patient either giving diuretics or applying a hemofiltration with negative fluid balance. And definitely we need to support the cardiac function. We have to apply inotropic drugs to the patient to improve the cardiac function. And as always, when we apply the therapy to the patient, we have to repeat the thermal dilution measurements afterwards to get updates for all the thermal dilution parameters, especially in this case again, global end diastolic volume index and extravascular lung water index.